All right. So, um, who saw live stream one? How many people that are watching saw the first live stream? Joe saw it, of course. Trisha saw it. And what were your biggest takeaways from live stream one? Watch the replay, amazing. Biggest takeaways from live stream one. It's 8.30 p.m. on a Bali Saturday night, by the way. So I am having a glass of wine as we are live streaming. Got up early today to watch again, amazing. Biggest takeaways, biggest takeaways from live stream one. to know because that one went there were a lot of views on that and we had a lot of comments we had a lot of people um, well I was actually pretty surprised that that live stream didn't get taken down in fact um, because we talked about a lot of controversial things and we talked about a lot of things that people you know just a lot of things that are being censored right now on the internet and it, I think it's important to have this dialogue and to have these conversations and it's but it's not always comfortable and it's not always comfortable for the people watching and that's sort of what this live stream event is about it's about talking about stuff that people don't want to talk about it's about talking about things that make people uncomfortable it's about talking about the reality of the world that we're living in right now and what we should be anticipating as 2021 draws near. And so I think that, you know, tonight I really want to talk about having freedom of choice and what are you willing to do to create that freedom of choice? And are you willing to actually see things for what they actually are? Are you willing? And we talked a lot about on the first live stream, we talked a lot about questioning everything. And are you willing to question everything that you've always believed was true? simply because you told you were told it was true and so i um i have these people sitting at my dining room table talking in the background so you can hear their conversation as well as mine but come over whenever you're ready taryn's gonna join me for a minute So it's Saturday night, which means that Taryn and I have been here webinaring and nonstop <laughs> and taking action that creates choices, right? Absolutely. I mean, this is the kind of action that makes choices. Yep. And I mean, there's nothing better than the feeling of being able to have multiple choices at your fingertips, whether it's where you want to live who you want to be with, how you want to show up, what you want to wear, what you want to buy, what you want to eat. Like, it's it's all about the choices. So, my choice tonight is to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Taryn Lee. Um, and I don't think we've actually ever done a live stream on my on one of my pages oh. together before, which is Here really interesting. I, I'm not uh, quite sure how I'm that's always, happened. I'm always sitting with you doing live streams, so I don't know yeah, how this but is worked Somehow out. we anyway. haven't done it in this venue. Um, so Taryn is an incredible, incredible leader in the uh, female entrepreneur space. Um, she is a expert strategist in network marketing. Um, she is my business partner in a couple of ventures that we are doing together and I'm hugely inspired by her all the time and her decision and choices to question everything and to decide against everything she was sort of raised to believe to live a different 
type of life and to go out and create economic freedom and choices for herself. Mm. And so I, we were working together here tonight before this live stream. And I thought, you know, it'd just be really cool to have her on and talk a little bit about, because maybe talk a little bit about like where you came from and how you were raised and, you know, sort of what you were expected to do. And, and we talk a lot mm. about programming and conditioning. Um, and I talk a lot to you guys about programming and conditioning, but and we talk about this questioning everything and beginning to think for yourself and deciding to go against the grain and deciding to make choices that the other people around you and in your life aren't experiencing or aren't choosing to yeah. make. So yeah. I would love to hear just a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are right now, which by the way is earning six figures a month, multiple six figures a month inside um, her business. Um, and having multiple streams of revenue mm -hmm. at this point and getting to live the life that you deeply desire and that you're wildly passionate about in Bali, Indonesia, basically doing everything that you want to be doing in life, right? Absolutely. Like living the absolute life of my, of my dreams because I decided that's what I was going to do. And for some reason, even when I was a little girl, I knew that I, I, I remember my grandfather telling me once, you know, you need to turn the lights off and you need to do this. And I said, I don't need to learn these things because one day I'll have people that do that for me. And I do now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, I, I grew up with a single mom. I mean, she literally had, literally had, when she paid everything, $10 a week for us to be able to do things on. I grew up around, I grew up in a really poor neighborhood, in a really poor suburb. I grew up where nobody wanted to grow up. And I, and I always felt like I had that as well, that stigma about where, where I grew up from. Um, and I just was always very, very aware of the lack of money and the lack of abundance that we had and how much that impacted my mother's life and our life. And, and then my father was a farmer and didn't really understand anything about this, you know, anything about the entrepreneur world or anything like that. And so I, but I don't know, I just deeply knew. I was like, I want a different kind of life. I don't want the life my mom has. I don't want the life my father has. And I don't want the life that my 42 cousins have. Good for them, but it's not for me. And, you know, living in the country, I, I'm not very domestic, so that doesn't help as well. <laughs> But yeah, so, so you know, I, I guess I went totally against the grain and in many ways I've always felt a bit like a black sheep in my family because I wanted more and I wanted more than what I grew up with and I wanted more than my mother had and I wanted more than my, my I wanted more experiences than my father had and, um, but just decided, just decided that I was just going to do it. I, I've always felt like we get this one shot at life and it's not a dress rehearsal. And so why not make the most of it? Why not go out there and do, do the best you can with all the different gifts that we're all kind of given. And so, yeah, that's definitely where I've came from. I mean, our programming, I told you the other day, you know, my dad still to that, to, still to today. I can't even tell my dad how much I earn because it blows his head away. But still to today, my dad will say, why can't you just be a hairdresser? I understand that. Like, not that there's anything wrong with being no, 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 uh, 100%. It's to absolutely, I love hairdressers. <laughs> not that there's, yeah, but the thing is, like, he just can't understand this entrepreneurial life and can't understand especially a woman being like that. And so, yeah, I, I fully feel like the black sheep of my family. I go back to my, my family reunions and I don't even, I, can't, I barely can even tell them what I do <laughs> because it's too crazy. So, yeah. so how did you make the choices? Like, how did you break out of, I mean, you, you, you know, and I know that you are quite diligent in continuing to question everything, continuing to educate yourself, continuing to, um, break down conditioning and programming. You just signed up for Ouroboros actually. Mm -hmm. So you're doing Ouroboros, this round of Ouroboros, but what enabled you to make that first, like, what enabled you to break free in that first big way that enabled you to be like, you know what, this is all bullshit. Like, I don't have to believe this. I don't have to buy into this. Like, mm. I don't have to play inside this game that I'm being programmed and conditioned to believe that I need to play in. Yeah, I mean, I was very, very fortunate that even though my mum wasn't playing a big game, she would constantly tell me that I could do anything in the world I wanted to from the moment I was born. 
funnily enough, my father's family were very much the opposite. They're like, don't shine too much. Like, like, you know, don't, don't, don't be odd and shine too much. That's crazy. Be humble about everything. Yes. But my mum was always really like, you can literally be anything that you want in the world. And even though uh, for a lot of the time I thought they were just words because they were just words because I didn't see my mum living that way. I thought you're living how you, everyone, you, you've been told to live. But I feel like there was that thing that after a while that that enough was enough for me to go, I really could live any way that I want to. And then I would just get inspired by other female entrepreneurs, to be honest. I would look at what they're doing and I would read their stories and I would think, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it? Like, they've got all the things. I'd read all their stories and many people that are super successful have come from humble beginnings or have come from whatever. And I would just think, well, shit, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Like, what, what, what was so much different to them that, that was for me? And so that was really, I guess... Part of my unconditioning of that was um, deciding to focus more on people that I wanted to have the life of and more the people that I would see that were living the life that I wanted to live and were successful and were traveling the world and, and doing what they wanted. I chose to focus on them instead of maybe, maybe like, like I disconnected from TV a long time ago, even when I was younger. So I just decided that I was going to focus on that because what you focus on expands. So if I focus on successful people and the people that had the things that I wanted, if they were living the life that I wanted and they created them themselves, they weren't just born into it, I guess, like, like, you know, other people can be, but they weren't born into that. That's who I followed. And so I just became, I guess, relentless at learning how they did whatever they did in their world. And, um, and tried to block out the other stuff and tried to not care that I was the black sheep of the family. So it's interesting because we always talk about our similarities and I actually never knew this about you, but I think it's fascinating because we often talk about how our mothers are a lot alike mm. in many ways. But that is the thing I think for me that I say all the time is, has been so helpful to me is that my mom told me the same thing. Yeah. She always told me, you can be anything you want to be. You can be anything that you want to be. Anything that you set your mind to, you can be. And very similarly, she wasn't being that. And so it took, but that is also programming and conditioning. So we were programmed and conditioned from a very young age mm. at some level, whether we were seeing it or not in our environment and our surroundings to believe that we could be anything that we set yeah. our minds to, or we could achieve anything we set our minds to because we were told that yeah. and even though we weren't seeing it we were told that so i never knew that about you which is super interesting because that's mm. the thing and i actually i've talked about it it's in the beginning of my book where i actually give credit to my mom and say you know there were a couple of things that that really impacted me in my life that she told me and one of those was that she just on repeat yeah. told me you can be anything yeah. you want to be you can be anything you want to be and the other thing that she always told me was that beauty is only skin deep and yeah. so it's more important to be beautiful yeah. inside than it is oh, to be beautiful outside. That's that she's my mom would tell me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it that just shows you how unbelievable that like that conditioning yeah. is. Had I been I mean my parents were separated, but had I been totally raised by my father, I probably would be a different person. Because him and his family and his beliefs are be humble. Um, don't talk about the things that you're special. You're not that special. Like, it, it, you know, it, he, obviously he loves me and things, but it was very much not that special. Whereas my mom was, you are special and you can do anything in the world that you want to do. Yeah. And so I am always grateful that even though my mom didn't live that life, she didn't kind of, her actions weren't like that, but her words to me from the day I was born was, you can do anything in the world. And therefore I have. And I think that, you know, for those of you that, because I saw a couple of comments of people being like, well, my mom was the opposite. I think the thing you have to understand is that we all have programming and conditioning, mm -hmm. no matter if it's, I mean, and some of it comes directly from our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents, but we're all carrying generations of ancestral DNA programming um, and conditioning around money, wealth and abundance and prosperity and worthiness and deserving. And so there's a lot of baggage that we carry that's not ours. And, you know, I carry tremendous slavery codes through my father's side of the family. Um, and 
all of it can be overcome. So even if you didn't have the mother that was telling you, and I think, you know, sometimes I look at, at growing up the way that we did as, the, I mean, there's another layer of programming that has to be gotten rid of there in that we don't show up in the same way in living a limited life, but saying yeah. that you can do anything you want because there's, there's an incongruency there. There's a, like, there's a, there's something out of integrity in that living one way and saying something else. Um, and so, you know, for me, I know that's something really major that I've had to overcome in my journey. And so we all have our own shit. We all have our own money story. We all have our own baggage. We all have our own things we need to work through. And on that, I think, um, I would love to just ask you like, because you did sign up for Ouroboros mm -hmm. and you would think someone who's making six figures a month, like why would she need to sign up for Ouroboros? So, and I haven't even actually asked you <laughs> why you signed up. So I'm curious to know. What is it about Ouroboros that you were like, yeah, I, I'm going to sign up. I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to commit. Because by the way, our time is very precious. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time working and chasing these dreams that we have. And so I think, you know, and you can speak for yourself, but when I choose to invest in a program or I choose to invest my time, all my most precious resources, my time, energy, and money, I don't take that lightly because time is limited. <laughs> for us and and if you're living the life of an entrepreneur you I'm sure understand that but so I'm interested to know like what is it that you know what are the things that you're still working on or what are the things that you're wanting to break through at this point and like what why did you say yes to Ouroboros because it never stops like the learning about doing this and the breaking through of things never stop and I also have seen you and how how you have broken through different things and speaking to some of the other people that had been in the Oris Boris program and they were like, wow, this really tremendously shifted for me. And so whilst I might sit here and be doing, well, you're doing six figures and multiple six figures a month. Well, the reality is I want to do seven figures a month. Yep. <laughs> and so <laughs> there is another level I need to break through to be able to do that. And so that's why it's not, for me anymore it's not the money it's the time to be able to give to something so that's more I'm like oh gosh the investment of the time but that's because one I know we never stop learning I saw some of the testimonials and the results that other people had within your um, within your program it's a different program as well there's a lot of kind of other programs out there that I feel are quite similar and yours is really quite different and it goes really deep um, and yeah, I'm six figures a month, but I want to be seven. Yeah. So that's, that's why. So one of the things I think that we've talked a lot about is, um, the familial programming and that even when we're breaking through or we're breaking free financially from limits that perhaps our parents had or our grandparents had and you know, I mean, I think this is quite common. It's like really difficult to talk to when, you know, and, and we're very blessed to be at this level, but it's very difficult to talk to people, I think in our families about the amount of money that we earn because they just, one, they can't comprehend it. Two, they think we must be like dealing drugs or doing something I illegal, <laughs> like be arms dealers or something. I don't know. Cause they're just like, what How do you, do you mean? Do How are you doing that? Like I could remember I told you, I can't tell my, I can't tell my family that I travel business class. Yeah. I'm like, they would just be like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, that, that's just normal. And then, but they, it's just not normal for them. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's quite a thing. But I think, so, and the thing that we've frequently talked about is um, familial programming is, is one of the most debilitating bits of programming that we have. Because even at our level to be like, it's just, we can't talk about it. You can't talk about it. It's like not acceptable. And this is the thing that, that that familial programming is perhaps some of the most debilitating. And I know that this is something that you're definitely wanting to work through um, with your family. Mm. And, it's, and it's the thing that I still really work hard on as well. Because at some level, if we're holding ourselves back from freely and openly sharing who we are and, and our existence and our reality with the people that are closest to us, we're holding ourselves back. 100% <laughs> and I share that even that, that story about travel with you because I remember very distinctly I think I was telling you that story right I was like very distinctly I, I was I was posting a picture of me traveling 
And I don't care what anyone else thinks, but I really cared what my dad thought. I was like, oh, I post this and my dad is gonna be thinking like, why are you showing off? You know, why are you doing this? Like, why are you even traveling that way? And so, oh. And so We're it was- Shutting up the house. Yeah. It was my, it was my dad that was making me stop wanting to do that because it, I had his voice in my head about, you know, be humble, don't be like that. And don't be wasteful. Don't be and wasteful, don't be, yeah. yeah. Like, you should be spending that on something else, not travel. I'm like, no dad. Like, I make way more money when I travel that way than yeah. when I don't. <laughs> so I think that, you know, there's this part of us, all of us, and it doesn't matter how much you're earning. Like, we have this programming and conditioning that is passed down to us from our parents and from our great grandparents. And, you know, if you're in Taryn's and my age range, um, which maybe we will or will not give that away, but if you're in our age range or anywhere around our age range, you had parents and great grandparents that grew up and were raising children during the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And so, and as a result Why are you of. You're making us sound really old. I know, right? But it's true. Like, our grandparents and our great grandparents grew up and were raising kids during the, during the Great Depression. And that era of time on this planet was. I mean, there's gonna be another era of time that's gonna be that impactful. And it's now. what we're living through right now. Yeah. What our children are experiencing right now in the world and the masks and the social distancing and all of this stuff, like we will look like generations from now, our kids are going to be looking back going, oh, our parents and our grandparents were living or were being well, raised during this, during time. But also virus, generational right? wealth has just had, for many people just been wiped off. Yeah. Like people that had all these, you know, great businesses and all these sorts yeah. of things that they'd spent generations building up. Yeah. This year, there has been so many of them. They've literally just, boom, yeah. like, Generations of wealth have just annihilated over this year. Yeah. So, and that carries a lot of baggage with it, as you can imagine. And so all of us have that stuff that we're carrying from our grandparents that, that you know, it's not ours to carry. Like, it, it is holding us back and it's not ours to carry. The thing I think that's so interesting is, is that this is actually what created tall poppy syndrome. Mm. This is actually what created mm -hmm. crab bucket mentality is it was like we, it was dangerous, right? And everybody was suffering. So if you weren't suffering and you were showing that you were like, those people were hiding their money. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. nobody wanted to appear like they were making more money than other people because so many people were suffering. So it was like assimilate, assimilate, assimilate. Don't shine, don't shine, don't shine, don't shine your light. Mm -hmm. And as people started to recover from the Great Depression, which was a global impact, right? And as people started to recover from that, it, we still carried that don't shine, don't shine, don't shine. And, and obviously there have been a few people who have broken free from that mold and, and you know, and, and they shine and, and they become our celebrities or our influencers or our, our politicians or our government leaders. Um, but the, the programming and conditioning is real. And so even for people who are really, really successful now, there's still a money story. No matter where you are, there's always more layers of the onion to peel back. There's always more to uncover. And, you know, I'm passionate about this work and it's because I do it every day. Like I'm, I literally do wealth consciousness work every day. I'm always trying to go deeper. I'm always trying to expand. I'm always trying to figure out what's the next thing that's holding me back. What's the next thing that's holding me back? How do I break through that block? Um, Cause I just believe that we're limitless. Mm, we are, we are limitless. And when we keep pe peeling it back, we finally get to that place where we realize we really are. Which is what I love about that work that you're really doing is you peel back that layer and people will reach that next level of income and wealth and belief in themselves. And then you'll, next, you'll peel back the next one and you'll peel back the next one and the next one and next one until you just realize you are completely limitless. And so saying something like, I want seven figures a month or eight figures a month all of a sudden becomes not a pie in the sky kind of dream it becomes reality that you know will happen so having that kind of support to know we're going to get all that unprogramming happening like the more the layers start to come off the more you realize okay I just get some more layers off and all of a sudden the more money I'm going to make yeah. so, the more I expand <laughs> yeah. the more I shed the more I expand the more I yeah. shed the more I expand yeah
So for you, because I, I, and I truly believe, I say this all the time. I mean, it's like, I let people come into Ouroboros and I'm like, you think it's about the money, but it's actually not about the money. It's actually about worthiness and deserving. That's the work that we're really truly doing in the program. So to get to where you are right now, how did you step into that? I'm worthy and deserving of this massive amount of income. I'm worthy and deserving of having this life that I deeply deserve, desire. I'm worthy and deserving of living on this tropical island. And like, how did you get to that place from being like, don't be too much, don't be humble. I mean, obviously your mom told you you could be every, mm -hmm. anything you wanted to be, but like, how did you get to the place of, I'm actually worthy and deserving of this life? I didn't so, know this was going to be an interview Taryn show, but apparently that's what it is. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think that, okay, I obviously had my mom who planted those seeds in my mind, but I also had 50 other members of my family that were very much like down, downplay everything of you. Um, I don't think I really tapped into that full feeling of worthy and deservingness until, what are we talking? until uh, 20 months ago when I was told we believe you have early onset MS and for that four months it was the most clarity I've ever had in my life to realize that I've been building all this stuff and I've been building this freedom life and to be told that I might end up being trapped in a body that would deteriorate it gave me so much clarity, it was unbelievable. And it was really to have that moment, if I'm really honest, which was like, you can and do have anything in the world. And that's because we only have a really short freaking time here. So we might as well play big. And even though I even though I believed that, or no, I mustn't have believed it really to the point that it did really land for me. Even though I've always said those words, it was then that it really fully, fully landed in those four months when I had no idea what the outcome of my health was going to be. It was in that four months that I was like, you know what, if I come out on the other side of this somehow, I am, I just had realized how freaking short life is and how freaking precious it is and how like we actually can go do anything we want because it is short and precious. That's what is so remarkable about it and so all of a sudden it became my mortality actually that made me realize I am so worthy and deserving of anything that happens on the planet as we all are yeah like we all are and it was really I think that kind of bitch slap from the universe <laughs> that it gave me that that just kind of said wake up it's time for you to play big it's time for you to truly step into all those things that you say that you want and believe in the world and it's time to really believe it. And so I think it was that more than anything, actually. That and you really... didn't ultimately end up having MS. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> so... I, I didn't. But for four months, everybody thought that I did. And I did. Everyone thought that I did. And the doctors all thought that I did. And so for that four months, while I was going in and out of testing, I was like, holy shit, my life is about to get really, really freaking different. And you know, the day that my doctor told me that this is what we believe, yeah, is, is wrong with you uh, was the same day Selma Blair had just said to everyone she had MS so all I had that day was all over Facebook this woman who was shaking in her body and talking about how everything is affecting her so yeah it was a massive bitch slap from the universe but it actually like anything it, it has been for me the greatest gift ever to have that time of bitch slap because <laughs> It made me just realize like life's short. It's so precious. We really can go do anything and why freaking waste it? Like why waste it on what other people think of you? Just care about what you think of you. And so, yeah, I think that that was really the, the catalyst for me to do that. Although I, you know, I do think that I had all those seeds along the way yeah. and um, following a lot of mentors along the way. But yeah, it was, it was that moment that made me go, uh, it just gave me so much clarity. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you can ever, <laughs> I mean, anyone else that has ever experienced that, that moment, th those moments of clarity, there's nothing like it to realize what the world really, really is like and that we truly are, truly can have anything and do anything we want. So, yeah. And I know that you're a very spiritual person. Um, 
and you know, I think a big part of our life here in Bali is exploring, I mean, going on as many spiritual journeys as we can, right? And so I'm interested to know, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot in Ouroboros is that we're multidimensional beings and we're doing clearing on, multi, on, a, on a multidimensional level. Um, we're literally clearing 13 dimensions, 13, the 13 chakra system. Um, so I'm interested to know how big of a role your spirituality and that accessing yourself on a multi-dimensional level has played into your success and into your ability to like generate the wealth that you've generated at this point. Have you always been like this? Have you always been spiritual or is this something that like has happened along the way? Hmm. Have I always been? I, I feel like I have always kind of been spiritual. And again, from my mom, I think. I mean, I went to an all-girls Catholic school, so there was that kind of spirituality, but different to this kind of spirituality, I guess. And always loved, loved Bali. I always believed in magic. Like, I just always believed in it. And I... I think that my success is hard work and magic. And magic, I can only say, is from tapping into that spiritual side and so and I guess when I say when I use the word magic I, I feel like it's really saying spirituality yeah. but it's that thing that's almost unexplainable um, because I can't, I sometimes can't explain how, we've, how, how things have happened and how the universe has blessed me so much and so definitely it's played a huge role in in my in my abundance I, I it's played a huge role because I just have always believed that the more I tap into that side of me, the more abundance I will have. And the more I've tapped into that side of me, the more abundance I have had. So it's been kind of like this perpetual kind of confirmation of what I've always felt like. Yeah. But it, and it's developing more and more and more. Yeah. Like, and and uh, certainly after, it's always been really strong in me, but certainly after uh, last year and that four months of, really not knowing what life was going to be like I dived really deep into the, to it then and so it's for the last since then last year, 18 months it's been even more so yeah I think and I say all the time I always I say it so frequently I'm like a forensic accountant could come and go through my business and my books and they would be like how the hell did you do this yeah right because it it doesn't make magic. Logical sense. it's magic and that's that's the part, and it's so funny because I actually was talking to Michelle about this um, a week ago, and I was saying, there's this part about Ouroboros that I can't explain to people, and it's the magic. Like, I can't actually explain why the things happen that happen inside that container, and you're in there, so you've seen, I mean, we started on the 11th, the doors are still open for a couple more days, but these people are having, like, pretty incredible whims for a week into a program, and it's the, this part I can't explain. Like, I cannot explain how the magic works, I just know that it does. Mm. And so there's, it, that's the hardest thing for me to get on a live stream and talk about, but it's also the hardest thing for me to explain about how I've created the life that I create because it is all magic. It is the belief in magic. It is the in synchronicities, which I know that you're in full alignment with. I mean, there's been, we've had the last two weeks of like synchronicity after synchronicity yep. that landed us today, like literally plotting right. out a, a multi huge million multi-million dollar empire. dollar empire on a whiteboard. <laughs> over there. Right over there. And say hi to Pete. Pete's over there working away. Hey Pete. <laughs> you <still laughs> so yeah. And, and, but it's all synchronicity and it's all magic and it's all believing, <laughs> believing that we can do anything that we want to do, but also really diving deeply into that magic and the synchronicity and like, well, it's, it's kind of believing everything, you can do anything, and knowing that the universe, the magic, whatever it is, has your back. Yeah. It's so, you, you they Which just show so up. It's cliche, right? Like, it does sound people cliche. People say it all the time, like, oh, the universe has way. your back. The universe has yeah. your back. The universe is always conspiring in your favor, but there is a moment that comes when you do enough of this work, when you do enough of this deconstruction of programming, when you do enough of this showing up, when you do enough of acknowledging and following the signs, there is a moment when the switch flips mm. and it, you don't know it in the moment. So you sit there and say, yeah, the universe has my back. The universe is always conspiring in my favor. Everything's always working out in my yeah. favor. And then you say it and you say it. And then all of a sudden one day you're like, 
it actually does. Yeah, I actually believe it. Yeah. And, and when that switch flips, it never unflips. Yeah, because now, now the thing is, it's like you see another reality. And so it's like your eyes have woken to something you can't unsee. And now you're just like, so now I know that it does. And the more that you believe it does, the more it does. Yep. So then the more you believe in your own ability to do anything and show up in any way, and next thing you're doing crazy things and have created another multi-million dollar empire. So, yeah. And that may be the thing that, that might be the thing about Ouroboros. It may actually just be that it is the deconstruction of the programming and the conditioning. It's when we get that out of the way that we're actually able to lean into the magic, that yeah. we're actually able to lean into the synchronicities and acknowledge the gifts that are being bestowed upon us every yeah. second of every day 100%. that we just can't see before. Do you know what I feel like it does? I feel like inside of each and every one of us, we have this beautiful, beautiful, whatever color you want it to be crystal that's inside of us, right? That actually can attract and allows us to be magical and do anything that we want. And these beliefs is like the plaque that is kind of like cased on the crystal. And when you do these kinds of things, it's like you're chipping that plaque off and wiping that plaque off. And so you're just allowing it to be this beautiful, clear crystal that is shining through. Whereas those- And then magnetizes. And magnetizes everything. So then it's all just, everything's attracting to you, but then also coming through you as well. So that's what I feel like it is. I feel like, it's like we've got this crystal inside of us where all every single human is this beautiful human crystal and these beliefs is just like this shitty plaque that somehow gets stuck yeah. with all the words and all the things and all the tv and whatever our parents say and our grandmothers say and our whatever whoever in our environment yeah. says this plaque and we just need to kind of brush it all off shine us up shine up this crystal inside of us that's like a great sales line buy Ouroboros and chip off the shitty plaque around your crystal shine up your crystal <laughs> shine up your crystal polish up your crystal polish your crystal <laughs> so well thanks for being here You're i welcome. appreciate you sharing your story and i think it's great to you know i feel like so blessed and lucky i literally get to hang out with these incredible women and these incredible men that are all in so much alignment with where I am in my life and that believe that we can have everything we deeply desire and we see nothing but infinite possibilities in front of us. And it's, it, and I, and the more I'm around these people, the more inspired I am to do this work in the world because the more people I want to be in this place and position that we are. Um, and at the same time, like I want people to understand that it still takes work here it still takes work on a day-to-day -day basis to show up and and reinforce those beliefs and fully energetically back ourselves yeah. in the life that that we want to create in the life that we want to desire and it's not easy like it's not easy because if it was easy everyone would be doing it everyone would be a millionaire everyone would be making six figures a month like it, that just is not the reality because most people aren't actually willing to one show up and face the programming in the darkness and and the, the things that are holding them back. They're not willing to spit polish their crystal. They're not <laughs> willing to spit polish their crystal. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are, like literally if you are, if you're willing to show up and do the work, like that is how the magic happens. Mm. And you know, and, and, and it isn't, you know, I think I get, I get people that show up and they're like, ah, you're just bypassing. You're, you're just bypassing the reality of people in the world who are living in poverty. And I mean, maybe you can speak to that a little bit because one of the things that people say a lot to me is, well, what about the people that are living in poverty that don't have the opportunities that you had growing up? And I was like, well, listen, I was raised by a single mom who was sometimes working three jobs, but frequently working two jobs to support me. And I didn't grow up you know, and, and yes, I am privileged. Yes, I, I lived a life of privilege, but to teach people that they are limitless and to teach people that their ability to create is unlimited to me is not bypassing because I have seen so many people come from a severely impoverished state to states of tremendous wealth and abundance because they believed that they could. A hundred percent. Like, um, even I guess if I look even back to my childhood, some of the, my childhood friends are still in that state mm -hmm. and, and 
I look back and I think, what really is the difference between them and me? And it was just the belief. Yeah. The belief that I deserved more to, and to get out of there. Yeah. And I didn't really, I mean, I did in the beginning care what they say because they're your peer group. But then as I got older and older, I realized they just don't have the life I want. And so why was I listening to them? Yeah. So yeah, seek out the people who live the life you want. They, they're the ones that have the blueprint. So they're the ones that you need to be listening to and following and being guided by because if they have the life you want, then that's where, that's where you, they're your guiding light. That's where you need to go. Yeah. 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 And I, just, I don't know. I feel like as well, you hit another level as well where you hit a different reality. Yeah. You know, like I know that, you know, people are living in another reality. We're living in a different reality. We broke through that though. Yeah. And it's how to break through it. It's how to break through from that reality to the next reality to the next reality. Yep. So that's the that's the part of the guiding process too. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I will Thank love you, you and leave you in the very capable hands <laughs> of the wonderful Miss Leah. But yeah, super excited about the program and I'm sure that I sit here next year saying I'm a seven figure a month though. Oh my god. I can't so, wait to see the results. What a testimonial you that'll be for you. <laughs> I can't wait to see your results. I can't wait. I mean, I and literally like I can. I'm already experiencing them, and I just have the benefit of I get to actually benefit from her results <laughs> in the program as well, personally, financially. So, because we're collaborating awesome. on all these things. Awesome. So, so I, I mean, are these or as, or as people already? No, I mean, these are prospects. These oh, are. Right. This is a lot. This is like one of our. The doors are closing on Wednesday. Oh, this is literally. Whoa. They were supposed to close tomorrow night, but I've extended it because I am releasing a podcast, a two part podcast, one tonight and one on Monday. So the doors are actually closing Wednesday now. I've extended by two days. But, wow, get but, in. Let's play. Let's yeah. play together inside there. Let's shine our crystals together. Yep. Let's polish our crystals. We're all going to be polishing, our, polishing crystals our crystals together. Awesome. Pete, awesome. are you going to spit shine your crystal? Always. Always. He's, He's always it. spit shining his crystal. So Awesome. All right. All right. Have fun. See you tomorrow. Oh, we just totally missed each other. Oh, we're like, we? oh. <laughs> <laughs> this happens when we're trying to cheers champagne also. I'm not quite sure that oh, yeah, we just kind of missed the mark. We don't know what we're doing. Oh, no. See, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and somehow we're still doing all the things. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I think it's the crystal that we're yeah, shining. Yeah, it's just the crystal <laughs> shining through. <laughs> all right. Coordination Bye-bye. be down. Thank you. I what? see you tomorrow when we go to Oh uh, yeah, tonight. so we're going tomorrow morning. We are waking up bright and early and we're gonna go spit shine our crystals by spending some time in a completely, completely magical resort um, of our friends Michael and Sara Franti up in Ubud tomorrow morning and going to a private Michael Franti concert and gonna be spending some time in the Bali jungle sunshine, which will no doubt be sweaty and hot and muggy, but We'll get our dance on and maybe lose some weight. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a lot of talking. I love that Taryn was here and was able to hop on. We had some webinars tonight, and so I just asked her if she would mind popping on. Um, but I'd really love to know from all of you. I mean, we just we talked about a lot of stuff right there, like what's coming up for you. Are you feeling triggered in any way? Is there anything that uh, you want to hear me riff on based upon the things that we just talked about? Is there anything where you're like, ah, I can't possibly do these things because X, Y, and Z. Like, I would love to dispel some, dispel some myths and, you know, really talk about like, what does it take? What does it take to shift? What does it take to change? And are you willing to do what it takes? Like, do you think that you have it in you to do what it takes? Or are you sitting there going, oh my God, there's no way I can do that. waiting for the delay. Discipline. Discipline's what you want to hear me talk about or discipline is what? Discipline what?
well, I guess I'll just start riffing because nobody's saying anything. Um, you know that I believe that Worthiness and deserving definitely hit a spot for me. It's come up a few times in different ways in the past two days. Well, lucky for you, Miss Joe, you are alumni back for your second round of Ouroboros. So we're gonna be crushing all of that. Ah, discipline's what it takes to get over yourself. I was wrestling with it until you. Yeah, absolutely. Rigorous discipline in personal practices and showing up for yourself to shift those limiting beliefs, to shift the negative thought patterns, to shift the programming and conditioning. Like it does require that you show up. Like really, really does require that you show up. So let me tell you guys something. Um, the struggle is real. We've been having issues with Bali Wi-Fi all day today come back come back everyone come back um yeah the bali wi-fi situation has been really difficult um dina says i'm in ouroboros 4 and have already experienced full-on magic before my eyes involving money yeah yeah so we just it's bali internet it's been going in and out all day like it's been glitching it's been going in and out so sorry about that hopefully everyone will come back come back um, it's been, it's been in and out and glitchy all day today, which is part of the sacrifice that we make for living in this beautiful paradise on this beautiful island is that sometimes our internet is shite. So what do you do? Everyone's coming back. Um, and now I totally lost my train of thought, forgot what I was talking about. What was I saying before we got cut off? Oh, I know what I was saying. So I was going to share that. So the doors are closing for Ouroboros on Wednesday. I'm going to close them Wednesday night. They were meant to close uh, tomorrow night, but we just decided to release a special edition of the Wealth Witch podcast. One of the episodes is likely already up and released right now. And it's a two part of my very special uh, masterclass, the three hour masterclass that I did that I had two incredible, incredible guests on. Um, so I decided to release it in a two part podcast. And so as a result of that, we decided to push the doors closing until Wednesday. So you still have till Wednesday night. Um, and so that is like definitely there and um, you know, obviously I would love for anyone and everyone who feels like they can dive in and do this work right now to do it because it's so important. There's never been a more important time on this planet to do this work. And the truth is that we're, we're just in this incredible time in the history of humanity that it's not going to come again in our lifetime. We're not going to have the ability to take inspired action to create choice like we do at this time in history. And because so much is up in the air and because so much is shifting and changing, um, that, that makes things difficult in, in some sense, but it also makes things, it makes, it makes it very, a, a very, very good time to begin to shift and change the things that always have been. And so energetically, we're being supported right now to step into worthiness, to step into greatness, to step into choice, to create economic freedom for ourselves. Like we've never been able to before. Um, our parents didn't have this. Our grandparents didn't have this. Our great grandparents didn't have this. They didn't have these opportunities that we have right now um, because of the th everything that's happening on the world stage. And so, the sense of urgency is real. Like the sense of urgency is real. And you know, I encourage you to do whatever it takes to join me on this journey because four months from now, on the other side of four months from now, you're gonna be living an entirely different life. And you're gonna be looking back on this going, wow, like look where I was then, look where I am now, look at the choices I have, look at the freedom that I have. Um, 
And I truly believe that there's never been a more important time on this planet to do this work. So I hope that many of you will watch this and be inspired by the beautiful Taryn and decide that you're willing to do whatever it takes, decide that you're willing to show up. Um, and having said that, I do want to say that um, obviously we fully understand and recognize and realize that Ouroboros is not everyone's financial reality right now. And while I truly believe that when there's a will, there's a way. And if it's, if it's divinely aligned for you to spend the next four months radically transforming your life, that you're going to find a way to do that and you're going to show up and I'm going to see you in the container. Um, if that's not your reality right now, I just want everyone to know that we're releasing an incredible, incredible bundle. Um, that we are pricing very, very accessibly, and that will actually be uh, released on Monday. Um, and it's the new Paradigm Wealth Creation Bundle, and it's over 20 hours of epic, um, some of my best, best wealth content, some audio trainings that I've never released before, um, just some really, really great content to get you catapulted on your journey. And that is actually gonna be $333, and there's epic payment plans available. Um, and I haven't approved the sales page for it yet, so I'm not going to give you the link, but if you already know that like Ouroboros isn't within your grasp, but you want the bundle for sure, comment bundle in the comments or send me a private message so we can get you the link right away for that bundle and you can get access to it right away. Um, so again, like would love to have you in Ouroboros. There are limited spots still available. We are almost sold out. Um, I only have like two VIP spots available still to do your clearing with me. So if you've been on the fence, like consider this your sign. I would love to have you sign up. I'd love to have you join me. Um, and if that's not your reality and you definitely know you want the deets for the bundle, um, then comment bundle below or send me a private message and I'll make sure that Sophie gets you the link over for the bundle. Um, and that's it. So I have been at it since 7 a.m. this morning and tomorrow is a day off. Um, though I may do some kind of live stream from the car because I'm going to have a bunch of epic wealth creators um, in the vehicle heading up to Ubud in the morning. So I will, you know, maybe we'll do an impromptu live stream on our way up to our, um, to Michael's concert in the morning. Um, but uh, I will either see you in Ouroboros or I will see you in the bundle. Make sure to comment bundle below if you want the details on that. And otherwise, I'll see you in the for us. Have an amazing rest of your day, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world as you are watching this live stream or you're catching the replay. And remember, it is your divine birthright to be wealthy in all areas of your life. And you are so worthy and you are so deserving. And literally all it takes is a decision. It takes a decision to show up. It takes a decision to look at the hard things. It takes a decision to be willing to do whatever it takes to shift your current reality. And you are the most powerful creator in your reality. And please don't ever forget that. So until next time. Oh, and we have one more live stream. One more live stream, which will be happening before I hop off. I should say that. A final live stream extravaganza with a special guest. That will be happening. I'm having a really hard time with my calendar right at the moment. That will be happening Monday morning at 11 a.m. Bali time. So 11 a.m. Bali and or Singapore time, um, which is 10 p.m. Eastern. It is 7 p.m. Pacific and it is 2 p.m. in Sydney. So I will see you Monday morning for the final live stream. Make sure to go check out the Wealth Witch podcast because a brand new episode released tonight um, that I'm super excited about. And I'll see you guys Monday or in the Ouroboros container or in the bundle container or on the interwebs. Mwah.